Thanks for being with us. I mean, what we're seeing and uh, what's it. going on in rates and yields and mortgage rates, I mean, it's wild, right? It, it, it's wild-ish. What, what happened is when these rates adjusted a few months back, you know, the, the Fed took, a, took, took them down to try to increase home buying, but it was on a slower time of the year. But this is perfect timing for people in my position that are in residential real estate sales anywhere in the country, because this is normally when the majority of the buyers come out of the woodwork as well. So to see this thing intersect at this time is literally the perfect timing. And it has already caused quite a craze in the real estate market. Tell me about mortgage applications, because you're sure how they're just going to continue to roll higher throughout this year, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm very sure. And like what, what's happened, I've been able to talk about this for the past few months with, with you guys, is we have millennials purchasing for the first time ever. And there's almost 5 million millennials turning 30 this year. So when that happens and you couple it with an interest rate that's significantly under 4%, I think right now it's right around 36 we have people applying at record cases. So yeah, it, it's been awesome. The only thing that we're seeing right now as far as a struggle is the actual supply of, of, of inventory that's available for these people that are trying to purchase their first property. Tell me about existing home sales and new home sales. New home sales due out tomorrow. Uh, what, what's hot? What's selling? You mentioned the millennials getting into the market. Yeah. Where are we seeing the strength and what do you expect from new home sales tomorrow? Yeah, I think the numbers are going to be really, really strong. I think what's going to be interesting are, are the actual revenue reports, but the numbers are going to continue to increase because of the actual demand that we've never had with a certain area of, of buyers in the, in the marketplace. But the thing that's changing is the location and entry level price point homes. It's it's gone from two hundred thousand was a good deal now maybe two fifty, but it's really getting closer to three hundred thousand dollars across the country. So when that happens, we're going to see you know adjusted numbers, but. It's going to continue to be an interesting situation with builder reports because their prices have gone up so much due to land costs, labor costs, and also just costs across the board that we have not anticipated, we've not had the last four or five years. My last check on pricing saw an increase of 6.8%. I mean, you can give me a more updated number, but the point is that affordability is a topic uh, because we are seeing right. prices going up, right? Yeah, and again, it's, it's all relative. And, and I've been speaking about this for the last two years where Real Estate 101 back before this whole boom happened was location. Now it's affordability. So yeah, the, these increases, whether it's 6.8% or 20%, we're gonna see people move out of urban cores and millennials are gonna drive this to where we're gonna see many metropolises, whether it's in a city like Omaha, Nebraska, or a city where I am in Dallas, Texas, where it's gonna go and change Really, the, the, just the map and the, the outlook of a city you know, across our country, and it's going to be millennials driving the force. I was well, looking at Toll Brothers. I know you uh, have a quick thought on it, but we're waiting on yeah. some numbers after the bell today. The conference call will be tomorrow. The stock is up over 30% in six months, and some of the analysts like it. For example, SunTrust has a $47 target on, on um, Toll Brothers, so, but they're likely to post lower first quarter profit when you compare it, obviously, to a year ago. So why is that? Yeah, I, I think it's pretty simple. I think it's the cost. They've increased so high where it's something as simple as land. It's gotten a lot more expensive. Something as, you know, something as simple as lumber has gotten a lot more expensive. And when you have natural disasters, which continue to happen, that's going to drive the cost of supplies up you know, exponentially, which is going to also drive the price of labor up. So. Yeah, I mean, just because they're selling more homes doesn't mean they're making more money. And I think the one thing that's happening that we've seen for the last few years is, again, that it's going to go back to the location. The bullseye has shifted. And in order for them to hit their margins and make their numbers, they have to go build in areas that historically wouldn't have gone and had a strong presence in. Wow, all those L's. Labor, lumber, land, and location are all and factors love. of and cost. And love. The greatest of these is love. Yes. Love. You know, your home's made with love. I mean, the truth of the matter is yes. that many of these companies are having a hard time finding the land in the great locations to even build on, right? Yes. Yeah. Just as long as you don't use the other L, that's a lawyer to work with realtors. Yeah. We, yeah, it's just gotten really hard and it's been a really interesting shift in our market and the price points, anything under $650,000 across the country, we've seen just kind of sell relatively right off the shelf. So it, it's been interesting, but yeah, land, labor, affordability, all that stuff, the factors are, you know, are increasing every single day. Is now the time to still get in and get a home because mortgage rates are lower, even if it's a little more costly because my, my value will go up? Would you recommend buying a home at this time? I'd always recommend buying a home. And the, and the thing that we've seen happen too, which is kind of the, the quiet conversation are the rental rate increases. 
And these people that are buying multifamily zone land that they're paying probably two or three times what they would have paid for five or six years ago, that means the rent rate rent rates have to continue to increase. And this is not just in urban cores. This is in suburbs. This is in rural areas where historically you don't see 10 story apartment complexes getting built, but they're doing that and have to make their margins, which means, yeah, it makes more sense to buy. So save your money and all you 5 million people watching this that are turning 30 this year, save your money and just buy your first property and realize it's not going to be your forever home. Be realistic, build equity, have the appreciation game play a part of it as well. Sell in two to three years with my company, and then we'll help you buy something that you like a little bit more. So I, I have 10 seconds. Second home is an investment. Good idea or bad idea? It's a great idea. You know, it's real estate. And the saying goes, buy real estate and okay. wait. Don't wait, buy real estate. So, yeah, I think it's a great idea as long as you can offset the cost and make a little bit of money with the renter.